As the global pandemic put added pressure on industries that were already struggling to fill their ranks, engineering companies have been investing in training to bring their existing workforce up to speed and to keep pace with the accelerated digital transformation. Over the last year, as workplaces became remote, online learning opportunities have helped in upskilling and reskilling the engineering workforce. As organizations look toward rebuilding for the post-pandemic future, what skills will mid-career engineers need to stay relevant? And how will the adoption of online education continue to shape workforce learning and development? Find out more now in this episode of Mechanical Engineering Magazine's Special Report. Today's engineering companies are constantly leveraging new technologies to help them become more agile, more responsive to fast-changing global markets, and more innovative in the products and solutions they offer. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics projects employment growth for engineers, with nearly 140,000 new jobs expected for engineers from 2016 to 2026. Mechanical engineers were second only to civil engineers in terms of projected new jobs over that time period. Civil engineers with 32,200 additional jobs projected, and mechanical with 25,300. That growth comes in part because of new uses for artificial intelligence, robotics, additive manufacturing, virtual reality, and other technologies that will be incorporated into engineered products such as medical devices and to the increased production of computer and electronic products, transportation equipment, and machinery, according to the Bureau. We see that the jobs are going to be changing very rapidly in the next five to ten years. And given what we know about the evolution of skills and how that really creates gaps for the industry, uh, we and Siemens are trying to find a way to manage these changes in a very practical way. And, and not only that, we need to be systematic. Uh, you know, we're trying to implement a more systematic approach to uh, reskilling. And with skills becoming obsolete before we know it, it's really important that employees are constantly developing and growing to remain relevant in the workforce. The current generation of engineers entering manufacturing operations have experiences that differ in many ways from those engineers who have been on the job for two or three decades. Mechanical engineers fresh out of school grew up interacting with digital technologies. The new generation of engineers has developed skills for mining and analyzing data. They use computer-aided design tools, 3D simulations of systems, and virtual prototypes of components or devices before even fabricating an actual prototype. Many years ago, you could kind of say, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm just an electrical engineer. When you look at this digital transformation, um, you, you cannot just know one thing and say, I don't want to learn anymore. Uh, th therefore, it's very important that uh, for engineers to understand, you cannot have silos. You kind of have to push those cubicles down <laughs> uh, and, and talk openly, articulating uh, what are the new technologies and, and how can we uh, do things better, more efficiently and be open to, to learning. Early career engineers also tend to be much more experienced with designing systems that are networked and highly connected. That means they may assume that technology incorporates the ability to connect with other systems and share data, including the use of cloud-based applications and artificial intelligence type systems. In contrast, mid-career engineers might need additional training on these digital tools. It's ironic that, you know, we're talking about mid-career engineers being potentially vulnerable because they're not quite advanced engineers and they're not early career engineers. But I see this as an opportunity as well as a challenge. Yes, it's a challenge to be in that middle crew. But I will say that as you as as leaders and talent development organizations are looking at succession planning for their advanced career engineers, 
the mid-career people are the ones who are most likely in line for succession. And so I see this as an opportunity for mid-career engineers to step up to the plate, learn, and, and take advantage of mentorship opportunities and other programs offered by their teams in order to grow into that advanced level. The global pandemic has accelerated the adoption of new digital tools. There is no doubt that besides learning new digital skills in demand today, engineers will need to engage in regular reskilling throughout their careers. We have this need um, for learning agility, and we're really looking for people who have a skill set to be able to learn and then unlearn and relearn based upon um, changing environments within the business, based upon emerging technologies. And we find that employees may find themselves in a situation where they have very limited expertise, it's, it's new to them, they don't have anyone to really uh, guide them to the right answers, and we really need them to be uh, flexible, to be willing to uh, question biases and, and to really shift their mindset. So more than just learning specifically new skills, we're looking for that learning agility um, and also that ability to um, increase their learning capacity. According to a recently published 2020 Workplace Learning Report by LinkedIn, learning is essential to help organizations develop the skills necessary to thrive and innovate in the new world of work. Learning and development departments quickly pivoted their learning programs to help employees manage through change, and their elevated role in organizations remains strong in 2021, highlights the report. Also. When learning and development pros globally were asked about their most important areas of focus in 2021, upskilling and reskilling topped the list. There's an equilibrium that occurs between self-directed learning as well as, you know, your corporate or your employer's directed learning. And of course you need to do what your employer requires um, in terms of, you know, table stakes training on everything that's required based on your state or jurisdiction. But, you know, I think it's it's a combination and it's a give and a take. <clears throat> so if an engineer wants to grow in a particular direction, whether it's toward leadership or towards being uh, a manager versus deeper technical expertise, they've got to communicate that to their manager and advocate for themselves. What's most important, in my opinion, to the mid-career engineers is to always be committed to lifelong learning, whether it's formal or informal training. In this new world of work, the workplace's digital transformation has highlighted the demand for employees who are comfortable working with technology. As more manufacturing organizations become interested in integrating machine learning, cloud computing, the Internet of Things, embedded software systems, and other next-generation technologies onto the factory floor, they are finding a lack of skilled engineers to help them do so. You know, uh, when you think about Festo, um, and, and especially the didactic group, um, you know, we have been an advocate for Skills USA, uh, World Skills, for many years uh, along the lines of mechatronics. Um, and, and we've even started to implement Industry 4.0 methods. Um, when we think about mechatronics, there's electrical, mechanical, um, there's PLC, of course, uh, there's robotics, and you have machining. Um, that would be the, the foundation, and we've always taught that within the education space um, a la carte, separately. And what we're seeing is that more of the system approach needs to be taught. Um, how do these different pieces of equipment talk to each other? Um, and if you have that system approach as the foundation, um, then you have these new skill sets um, where how do I connect ERP, uh, data management, MES, production planning, PLM, uh, product lifecycle management, and CAD. How can I bring these and pull them in um, into the, the buzzwords of top floor to shop floor? Uh, but we have to provide that to the education space. From a technology standpoint, that system approach um, has to be the foundation. Uh, and now you have a nice agile uh, workforce or individual that, that, again, can stand the test of time through this um, 
through the emerging technologies that we're seeing today. Lifelong learning for engineers doesn't stop. There is no doubt that the demands of the new workplace will continue. So how can engineers keep pace? You know, there's obviously, um, you know, a very large spectrum of available ways to at attain skills. Everything from additional advanced degrees to micro credentials, which are very common and popular at the moment, as well as training in specific, you know, topic areas or, you know, course areas. This escalation of change in an already evolving industry landscape has prompted the American Society of Mechanical Engineers to offer even more flexible, affordable, and applicable virtual training solutions to help engineers strengthen their skills for the current and post-pandemic workplace. Engineers excel at solving problems, but lack soft skills. According to industry experts, one thing that hasn't changed in spite of the digital transformation is that engineers need to have soft skills to be able to work on teams and collaborate. They have to be able to communicate clearly, which is even more important now in the virtual environment. We really try to build soft skills programs that are uh, intertwined with, with the technology training that they're receiving. So it's not something separate that they go to in a classroom. It's something that's, that's you know, really a part of everything that they're learning. And we think it's important for them to have exposure to the soft skills, but also understand why these soft skills are gonna be needed in their work. But engineers who interact with others will need a little finesse when it comes to communicating. They may need to state the reasons for needed design modifications, present plans and models, outline project scope, or negotiate deadlines. More employers are also looking for job candidates who can demonstrate those skills. It's important to recognize that engineers don't necessarily speak the same language as business folks or marketers or finance people. But in order to be a successful mid-career engineer, you really need to be able to communicate with all of the different folks that you're going to engage with. And another thing is business acumen. You know, engineers typically end up following a very rigorous curriculum, you know, coming through higher education, eventually in their early career, really fiercely focused on the technical aspects of engineering. But as you grow in your career, the ability to kind of expand into leadership, management, and other financial and, and legal aspects even of, of an organization is important, especially as you look to go from being an individual contributor to a manager. It's no secret that engineering is increasingly becoming an interdisciplinary exercise. Today's machines, from the computer to the MRI system to the coffee maker, include hardware, software, electrical, mechanical, and other systems all working together. Learning and development for engineers therefore involves enhancing not only technical skills such as emerging digital engineering tools, but also soft skills, including project management, communication, and collaboration that go along with working in these digital environments and will continue to be highly valued in engineering companies of the future. In other words, engineers of the future will work with computer programs more than ever before, but they'll also, more than before, need to call upon the skills that make them human.